both recording. Uh, scene one, take one, and audio sync. Okay. Er, hi there, lads and lasses. It's David OG here, the original gangster. And I'm the original gangster from Orange County, California. So today we're gonna do a hyperlight, a hyperlight rope uh, review. So I want you to see if you like the, the way the, the hyperlight rope review works today. So hyperlight is one of the greatest board manufacturers you can find out there. But this is my new rope I just got. Got it from hyperlight. Yes, look, it says hyperlight right here. Beautiful orange rope. So we've had a little bit of a problem with it. It's not been as good as you'd hope it would be. So what we have is the Hyperlite ropes, they come in very long varieties. They come in 75 foot uh, takeoff lengths, they come in um, 80 foot, uh, 65 foot takeoff lengths too, and that's great. The problem is, there's a lot of people out there that they ride a lot slower. A lot slower, and therefore they want a shorter rope. And that's newbies, newbies and intermediates. When you're a real professional like I am, and I can do everything, like, you know, double blinds and shit like that, and 360s and back rolls and things, sushi rolls and shit like that. But for me, I can ride at 80 foot or 75 foot at 24 miles an hour. But most of these people nowadays, they can't do that. So they need shorter ropes. The problem with the Hyperlite is they don't provide a rope that's shorter. So if you're looking at, if you're looking at, that's fine, keep shooting. Cameraman's throwing up right here. Get that cameraman in there, she's throwing up. This is great. Covered up. So here we so here we have it. So we have the so we have the problem here is that the takeoffs are right here and our biggest our biggest problem with the takeoffs is that is that it's not short enough for the people who, who need it to be short. So what does what does Hyperlite tell you to do? Well they tell you to take the rope. You take your take the rope, and now they've got this phenomenal extrusion, this rubber extrusion on here, which is orange extrusion. And they say, make a clove hitch out of it. So what you do is you take you take the rope and you make a clove hitch. So the clove hitch would essentially, let's took a let's take a look up here. You don't have to get up right now. Just stay where you are. We're going to make a clove hitch out of it. And so the thing that goes around here as a clove hitch, and then you go over the top of it like this and like that, and that is a clove hitch. Now that's fine and everything. The problem is, is if you do this with the, with the orange extrusion on it, what's going to happen is it's going to rip the extrusion right off. So there'll be the extrusion and it exposes the denimer, the actual rope below. So then you do a, you do a clove hitch with the denimer, which is below. And then what happens after a while, the denima starts to wear and it snaps. Now this is a brand new rope we've got right here, and it's uh, you need to throw up a, a throw up again for us. <laughs> Let us know if you need to. So, so this denima, this denima snapped on us. So this is like the third time out, which it wasn't good. Not only did this ro denima rope snap, it turns out you can never really have it. You can never really use a rope. Excuse me. When the denima is exposed like this, it's like a double one. So the double takes the friction and the pressure off it. But what we did, we ended up doing a clove hitch with the, just the one, one level of denima, and that's no good because you're gonna have exactly what we did. First, the orange thing is gonna be ripped off. And the second thing, the denima is gonna be exposed. You're gonna do a single clove hitch with the denima, and it's not gonna be enough tears. Now, the denima not only tore, but the denima also destroyed my, my tower. Come and take a look at this. This is what's left of my tower. You can see on here, the denima cut through. Now what it was, was I, I believe the friction on the denima is so great right here, when it's riding at, is that it heated it up and then it split it. This was perfectly fine before we went out today. And if you look, here's all the pieces. Here's the pieces that ripped off today through this denima rope. So I think the, the story is with this Hyperlite rope, that's great for professionals, but really terrible for anybody else, because you're going to have exposed denima, you're going to try to do a clove hitch with it, the clove hitch will fail, it will go, through, it will snap the rope and destroy your, destroy your plastic. So we're not recommending the Hyperlite rope right now for anybody other than professionals. If you're a professional, you're going to use the full length where it's the proper loop, but you cannot in any way make your own loop out of these hyperlite ropes 
especially with anything with Donima. I love Donima, but this did not work for us. So, hey, thanks, lads and lasses, for coming by, and I think that's wonderful that everybody's out today. I'm gonna head out on the lake now with my old chate rope, and I'm gonna do a couple of back rolls. So uh, stay tuned, and I'm gonna hit them. It's love, oh, great talking to you all.